I feel like it's a total project, but I also feel like I'm going down the rabbit hole right now. Hello, viewers of online entertainment. Welcome to my world. <laughs> if you're new, up above my head is some flyaway hairs because don't look at that right now. Above Mr. James May's head though is a link to the last video where I started a detail mini-series on my 1983 Ur Quattro, which I have named Febien, which is a French girl's name that directly translates to bean grower. Anyway, that video will get you caught up on something that has to do with not growing beans. I today am going to continue with the detail on this car instead of jumping back on the Ranger, even though it's killing me because I desperately want to put the front end together on this thing and start tearing apart the truck and swapping it over. And I know all of you watching would like to see that done, but I think most of us can agree it makes more sense for me to just finish this exterior detail because then this car is drivable. And in case you were wondering, no, this is not a piece of cheese on my drill. Well, that'd be really hilarious and stinky. I have no idea what that is. I have no clue what the hell this stuff is made out of. It does come off with chemicals. Yeah, it's literally not doing anything. Nothing. Maybe this will help. I just want this to be quick and efficient. I can get it off, but I want a quicker way of getting it off. <laughs> uh, this doesn't work either. So if I pull this little thing right here, yeah. Okay. It'd be great if I could just remove the roof. Oh, oh, it does come off. Good, 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 good. Okay. And this thing's 38 years of existence. I don't think it's ever been cleaned down inside here. And you can see all the smudge. I just spent an hour and a half cleaning a hole. No more schmutt. It's all gone. All the way around the sunroof. All cleaned up and I cleaned deep inside. There, got rid of all the schmutt out of it. The last video I did on this, the intent was just to correct the defects and blemishes that were in the paint itself. There was lots of etching from bird poop. This part doesn't really protect the paint. That's not the purpose of it. This is just simply making it all level, which does make it look visually shinier, but doesn't protect it. I'm a pro at explaining things. I got wax dust all over my seats. How sad. That means I'll have to make a video on detailing the interior. Hmm. <laughs> That's so neat that this, I don't, what, it's not a sunroof. It's a, it's a root, it's a vent. Oh, I don't think I have that on there right. Roof is done. This is a really difficult process for me to make into a YouTube video because I'm four 12 hour days into this detail job and I make a YouTube video every 72 hours. The smart business thing to do would be to do a half ass job on my detail or pay someone else to do it and make it take one video. It may not be the greatest thing analytically, but it's super satisfying if you appreciate detailing as much as I do. And also what I'm about to do right now, hmm, this is my favorite part about detailing a car tail lights using a much less abrasive polish and a much less abrasive pad and I'm gonna make these things pretty. Make it clap. <laughs> I've been breathing in too much of this wax dust. This bottle's a little constipated. Holy shit. Sorry. It's all of wax all over my lens. Lisa makes it shiny. That is nuts. That is wild. It's so shiny now. I feel it's more translucent too. Oh, hey, imagine that. It's, uh, it's dark out. 
It's fairly early in this video, but it's fairly late in this day. Minana. Good morning. I got a haircut. It's the next day. Uh, the car is ready for polish. Not polish. They are spelt the same. I figured you guys were sick of watching the cut process, so uh, I did this all off camera. The A pillar and the wiper cowl are completely done. Now this is not sponsored, but a lot of you requested in the last video to tell you what I'm using for products. So again, not sponsored. I paid for these products. I'm using some uh, Sonax Perfect Finish and I'm using a ultra fine cut pad to do the final polish before I apply wax. So first part of this took three days. This should only take three hours, hopefully, to accomplish the entire car. Welcome to the part of the video where you see the slow demise of my overall sanity. I have now been polishing this car for going on four days straight, not just four calendar days, but four 12 hour work days of labor on this car. And the fact that it's 38 year old paint, no matter how hard I try and how much time I put into it, it will never be a 10 out of 10. I will say that stepping up to a finer polish before applying the wax was absolutely worth it. And I'm glad I took the time to do this because it's making a massive difference in the gloss of the car. Shh, you hear that? It ticks, the time's wrong. But that's cute. I gotta bring this thing outside and rinse all this dust off before I start putting the carnauba on it. And it's freezing out, so my I'm gonna cut glass. There's so much dust on the windshield from buffing that it looks like it's snowed out. It has to be like in the 50s outside. My camera is not going any further down than that. This is my favorite, most cozy jacket. Thank you. Treat it well. He brought me food, and he brought me a jacket. Right. It's really quiet, super quiet here today. It's Thanksgiving day, there's nobody working. Well, at least here in the States it's Thanksgiving. Everywhere else, welcome to Thursday. Because of so many of your recommendations, I decided to go vegan on my car wax. So uh, I bought some Sonax Carnuba, not sponsored. Just you guys are curious what I use. This is what I'm using. This is pretty nice. I would expect it to be though, considering it was like 60 bucks for this wax. It's expensive. It's a German car, so it made sense to use a German wax. Doesn't leave stains on unpainted black plastics. Well, too late for that. This car was full of them when I bought it. Oh, where'd I, the little thingies flew out. I guess I just kind of get it on there like this. And do some crotch face. This goes on really smooth. I mean, that has to do with all the polishing I just spent the past week doing. It's giving off an effervescence of a tanning salon. Actually reminds me of the tanning salon in Germany. I used to go tanning all the time when I lived in Germany. Cause I mean, it's rainy and cold all the time there. Some of you were wondering if I was gonna put a ceramic coating on this after I was done in the comment section in the last video. And I honestly don't think so. Just because this paint isn't flawless, there's a lot of areas I couldn't get the etching all the way out without worrying about going through the paint because it's 38 years old. At least this part of the process goes fast. I realistically should be able to coat this entire car within the hour. And I really didn't do the bumpers because I plan on taking the bumpers off of this car because just because this paint is corrected and polished doesn't mean the detailing process ends. All coated. Now I just gotta let it cure. One glove. Ah, ah, ah. Two gloves. I think it has two gloves. Time to do the rubber. <laughs> Nobody said that. Yeah, this will work. I mean, I'm going through microfibers so fast. This stuff is probably years past expired. Some Nano Lex trim and rubber store. This rubber has got a lot of chalky white residue on it from this being a single stage paint. Not from me, it was just on the car when I bought it. So I wasn't super careful about masking it off just because I knew I had to do this anyway. But luckily it's all coming off. Actually it looks really good. You see down here by the hinge especially, there's all kinds of that white paint residue from it being single stage. But you rub it hard enough, it comes off. It's not an innuendo. 
Could be. I hope it doesn't come off. Other than the white residue that was all over this rubber trim when I bought the car, there's no burn marks on it anywhere from a buffer. So that's really good considering how old the car is. This is it. It's time to see if all that labor paid off. Does it come off easy? Oh yeah. I let it sit on here for like an hour and a half. It comes off real easy. Okay, I am not gonna time lapse this because I'm just gonna let it be done. Ready? This might seem a bit excessive and crazy, but I'm telling you, it works if you have common sense. If you don't have common sense, don't do this because you'll end up missing your ear. So this is my technique. I spray a little bit on there and I just go in one direction. If you scrape back and forth, I think it's a good chance that you could pick something up and accidentally scratch the glass. I've never actually scratched glass doing this. You think it would, but it's never happened. And I've done this a lot. Some more up here. I don't know if I should do this now or if I should just do an interior detailing video and do the inside of the glass then. I feel like it's a total project, but I also feel like I'm going down the rabbit hole right now. I wonder if these are heated also. That hinge is kind of loose, need to adjust that. So this part is gonna be a massive challenge. Now, it was like this before I started doing the detail other than the splatter, but as you can see, there's just white all over, and that's not wax, that's actually the white from the single stage paint bleeding off when this car was polished in the past, and it's everywhere. The method I'm going to use to peel this tape is confusion and soap. Don't wanna mess up my fresh wax job. The edge of the rear quarter glass right here is completely worn away. So I'm gonna have to do some trim black or I think trim black will probably match the best is probably what I'm gonna do. And also the very edge of the door right here. Alls Reckreininger Blitz. All purpose cleaner, is that what that means? Either way, I'll see if I can clean some of this stuff off. I don't want to put any trim black on here, especially if I'm going to paint that, because then the paint will never stick. Go over it with a mechanic napkin, see if I can get any of that soap residue off that's left behind. The little white splatter is from me. I got it everywhere. I wasn't really being careful. I didn't really care. This was one of my good microfibers. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to buy some more. I'm going through these like crazy. It's going on four o'clock in the evening and I told myself because it is a holiday today, I wasn't gonna be here working late. So I'm gonna end up falling behind. There might be a manana. I spent nearly a week straight doing nothing but polishing and detailing the exterior of that thing. And it's finally done. You have no idea how relieved I am to get that over with. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference on camera. It's really in person where you see the biggest difference. You wouldn't think polishing a white car would really show up, but oh yeah, it definitely made, I mean, look at that. Look at the gloss right there. It made such a huge difference, especially polishing the taillights doing all the black trim on this thing. Is the car a perfect 10 out of 10? No, but considering its age, I think this thing cleaned up fairly nice. And it's still a car that I am not afraid to drive. Had I just spent like 20 grand painting this thing and had a flawless paint job on it, then I'd be afraid to use it. And even though it's a super rare car with extremely low miles, 
I want to drive this thing. I want to enjoy this thing. I didn't buy it for the next person after me to enjoy it. I bought it for me to enjoy. Before, if I tried to rub my hand on the paint like this, it would be like rubbing a chalkboard, but it's super smooth now. Also, quick side note, I'm putting this at the end of the video because I wanted to catch those of you that are my subscribers that usually stick around to the end. I now have my own merch store on my website and the 80s vibe shirt from the TT giveaway, I loved it so much that I wanted to keep it around as well as there's a new design that is unique to the Ur Quattro. So instead of being the Sport Quattro like it's on my shirt, there's another one. So I have my own store now. I'm not gonna shove it down your guys' throats because I can't stand that when I watch YouTube videos and it's like, buy this, buy that, merch this, merch that. I'm not trying to do that to you guys, but I just wanna at least let you know because some of you really care and you, you do want to know if I have merch. So putting it out there, it's my own store. Link is on the, the thing below. With that said, there will be more Fabian content coming. I'm going to do interior detail, engine bay up underneath, might powder coat some stuff, who knows. And then once the car is looking good, I'll start doing some modifications. But I'm going to jump back onto the Ranger next and start with the cab and the body swap once I get the suspension all bolted up in the front of the truck. And I bought a soda blaster, so I'm going to soda blast the transfer case and the transmission and see how that comes out. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little detailing exterior mini series. And if you want to see some more detailing content, let me know. Let me know what part of the Uruquacho you'd like to see next. Okay, bye.